If you've been having a hard time trying to figure out the difference between intuition and anxiety and intrusive thoughts and how to make sense of it all, don't worry, I got you because I figured it out and I'm sharing it all in this video. Hey, I'm Donna. And if I do my job in this video, this is going to be one of the most helpful videos that I've ever put on my channel because I'm breaking down anxiety, intuition, intrusive thoughts, overthinking, and how to finally listen to your gut, how to finally tap into that inner voice and how to distinguish it all from all of the noise that's going on in the background. My goal of this video is to give you relief when it comes to all of this, because I've been there and I've had the hardest time figuring out the difference between intuition, anxiety, intrusive thoughts, and it is simple, but as humans, we love to make it all complicated. And for a really, really long time, I overcomplicated all of it. And let's face it, my anxiety and OCD didn't help at all. So I'm going to give you all the information that I've used and all the things that I've learned and the tools that I've used on myself, because I found that as I was moving more through my journey and my healing journey, all these sabotaging thoughts and all those old patterns of mine would come up, especially because I was had dealt with a lot of anxiety and some traumas and things in my life. So we're going to get into what is intuition, what are intrusive thoughts, the difference between them and most importantly, how they feel are in our bodies, how it comes up and how it shows up in our minds. And I'm gonna give you some examples of each. I'm even gonna give you an exercise at the end of this video to help you figure out how to distinguish between the two for yourself. And this is an exercise I use on myself all the time. Plus, for those of us that fear that we may accidentally manifest our intrusive thoughts, I'm covering that too. Don't worry, you're not gonna, I promise. You're not manifesting anything bad, but let's just go slow, okay? I just want you to know we've all been there and if you need to have a little bit more confirmation that other people have been there, just watch and see how many people have looked at this video because sometimes it's really hard and it can really get you just like feeling insane when you can't tell the difference between that intuition whisper and that just over screaming loud anxiety and irrational fear that comes in. And I'm gonna help you. We're gonna move through this and we're gonna navigate all of this and it's gonna be so much easier. So let's just break down what the difference between intuition and an intrusive thought is to kind of like help you a little bit more. Learning the difference between these two things is probably the biggest thing that helped me out and it helped me distinguish how it was showing up in my body and how to just kind of sit with it and figure it out. What I've learned is that you cannot let these thoughts consume you. They're kind of like a bee. You know how a bee like flies around and you kind of keep swatting it and swatting it and eventually it's gonna sting you? Well, that's kind of the intrusive thought. You either gotta let it go, you gotta lean in and acknowledge it and recognize it and be like, hey, we're gonna sit here and be together or you gotta get up and move. And that's basically what you gotta do with these thoughts. And one pattern that I've noticed with these thoughts is that when I am so close to achieving something, when I'm kind of getting in a flow state or I'm changing my habits, my routines, when something that I'm working on, like a project, like even writing the script for this video and coming up with all the ideas and coming up with all the thoughts I wanted to get through, all of a sudden I got a bombardment of intrusive thoughts because it's like, I guess my brain trying to protect itself, but it's really like, I don't need the protecting. I kind of want to do this and I want to get out of my comfort zone. But those intrusive thoughts come in to be like, hey, 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 and pull you back. So notice that and take the temperature of that in your own life because that is something that always happens to me. Some of the factors that contribute to intrusive thoughts. Well, let's see, anxiety, stress, past experiences, past trauma, living in fight or flight, constantly. Hello, the last three years of our lives and also operating at a high stress mode or having a lot of traumas in your life that you haven't worked through or you haven't addressed through like therapy and things like that. All right, Donna, give me examples. Okay, you get a sudden feeling of unease or caution in a certain situation, making you take a different course from the one that you're originally taking. Example, you're like, I should go left instead of right or let me go a different way to work this time. That is an intuitive hit. Another is a really good feeling or kind of like a sense of trust or camaraderie or connection, maybe with somebody that you just met, letting you know and kind of guiding you that this person is someone you maybe will form a meaningful relationship with. Or maybe the opposite, that visceral like Ugh, response and then mm, something ain't right with them. Sometimes it comes in like a little airdrop or a little bit of insight or inspiration that leads to like a creative breakthrough or a solution to a problem that you've been having for a really long time or pondering about for a while. It's that like aha moment that you've been waiting for. How have I dealt with this? Well, I've had to learn how to basically welcome the intrusive thoughts in. And what I do is I kind of invite them to the dinner table and it's like, hey, we're going to sit here and we're not going to run from this and we're going to figure it out. And I kind of talk myself through it. But that's also because I've had a lot of help in therapy and I've learned how to ask myself, are these intrusive thoughts a reaction to something that my subconscious hasn't even processed yet? For example, the other day I saw something on TikTok about perimenopausal women and dementia. And then what do you know? Five hours later, I'm brushing my teeth and I couldn't remember the name of a restaurant that I ate at five years ago. And I was like, oh my God, do I have dementia? Or when you're just doing like a random thing and maybe you saw something earlier about someone with cancer and then you're like, oh God, I hope I don't have cancer. That's an intrusive thought. You have to say, hmm, 
Why is this happening? You can also maybe be triggered by something from your past that's currently in your current surroundings or a conversation you just had, or maybe something I've just read. That happens a lot. Also, that's why I don't watch scary movies or things that are a little bit too intense. In the moment, I also have to ask myself if I'm potentially being triggered by something from my past um, that is in like my current surroundings, like whether it's something I just read or a conversation I just had, or maybe something that I just watched on social media or TV. And like my subconscious mind is picking that up and kind of like being activated when I really like wasn't kind of paying attention. And usually I find that these things when it comes to the intrusive thoughts have some type of attachment, emotion, and it involves the past or the future that I don't even know anything about. Also, a lot of people, including myself, I've been there, are afraid that they're gonna like manifest these intrusive thoughts because you're thinking about them, right? And the more you don't wanna think about them, the more it comes in and it kind of is like knocking on the door and they kind of like pop up and all those things. But I will tell you, you're not gonna do that. But before we talk about all of that, let's just kind of talk about manifesting and some of the tools that I have for that and how you can support this channel. If you are someone who is dedicated to living your absolute best life and designing the life of your dreams, you should head over to the Donna shop and help support this channel where I have created the Vision Board Brainstorm, which is a class that takes you through manifesting, intention setting, affirmations, and creating the best vision board that you ever have that taps into the reticular activating system of your brain. And if you're not ready for that, you can join us in our monthly circles. We're doing The Shift, which is a new series of gatherings where it's gonna be basically self-care and a time for you to take a pause and rest, reset, and retreat and do all the things that you need to do for you. Anyway, back to the video. Oh, all the information is below in the description box. Okay, back to the video. So I read online that some people um, describe this feeling as like shrinking in the moment. And that honestly is a really, really great way to describe it. What does this feel like when it comes in? Well, I will tell you, it feels terrible. It feels awful. For me, these intrusive thoughts just feel like a rush of fear and impending doom. They discourage me in the moment. I feel like I'm getting judged. I just like don't feel good. And then I start to obsess over it and it can take over my day. It can take over the moment. And usually the more energy I give it, the worse it gets. And kind of all of this happens to me when I'm totally present, when I'm having a good time, when I'm enjoying the moment. Like I said before, when I'm in total flow and then it's like, okay, brain wants to come and pull the rug out from under me and just fill me with all these worries and make me scared. And I can't like get out of the loop once it starts. And a lot of times I'll try to like push away and then it feels like just flooding. Like my brain is getting flooded and the water is coming in from every direction and it kind of ruins the whole moment. And in that moment, it, I feel like I'm shrinking. It feels loud and it triggers all like my deepest fears and I'm very reactionary. My body's anxious, I get upset, my stomach tightens up, my chest tightens, my head hurts, I feel spinning, I feel racing. And sometimes I feel like the walls are closing in on me. And a lot of people have described that shrinking in the moment feeling, and I totally can relate to that. And these intrusive thoughts are like sometimes the brain thinking it's protecting us. And once I kind of learned that, I've learned how to work through it, and I've learned how to deal with it, it's just gotten a lot better for me. So for me, intuition is a gut feeling or the sensation in my chest, sort of like a flower blooming, I guess, and kind of like a sense of knowing without really knowing why. And unlike an intrusive thought, which can feel chaotic and fear and unsettling, my intuition comes in or kind of like rises up very calm and clear. It's an inner guidance or just this inner knowing where I just know. And I just like kind of understand it instinctively without the need for any conscious reasoning or overanalyzing. And it's very, very neutral. It doesn't make me feel scared. It doesn't get me overly excited or sad. It's just very simple. And usually that's the problem because we have been taught that everything has to be so complicated. And trust me, this is not the very beginning intrusive thoughts basically they are like unwelcome guests at the party that you are throwing and that you have planned they show up we didn't invite them we don't know how they're going to act and we don't want them there in the first place and now because they're there that's the only thing we can focus on and they are ruining our good time and our vibes and these thoughts the guests at the party can range from irrational worries to disturbing images to obsessing about things that haven't happened or obsessing about things that did happen way long ago in our past that we kind of want to move on from and we want to move forward from. But regardless, all of this stuff is just leaving us unsettled and anxious and just not having a good time. And whatever you do, I want you to understand that intrusive thoughts are totally common and a normal aspect of human psychology. And if you're having them, it's okay. If you're having them a lot and they're becoming debilitating and they're overwhelming and taking over your life, you may need some professional help in the form of a therapist or a counselor. Again, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a counselor. I'm just someone who's moved through this, who is sharing her experience. Okay, let's keep going. Give me some examples of intrusive thoughts. What if I act out of character? What if I cut my finger off while chopping this avocado with this knife? What if I just punch my friend in the face when I show up and I see her right now 
boom, knock her out. What if I lose control? What if I do something terrible? Those are the things that come up as intrusive thoughts. And usually they're things that if we acted on in the moment, they would have awful repercussions and consequences. And typically they are so out of character and so out of alignment with who we are as people and our values. And that's why when they come in, we're just like, what the hell is going on? What you need to remember is they are normal and we are not our thoughts. So just let them move in and let them move out and just observe them. And I know that sounds way easier than it is to do. Trust me, I've dealt with it and I've had my fair share with it, but it will happen. And hopefully you get some more ideas with this video and with practice and you will figure out how to do it because it is possible. I am living proof of that. These thoughts can sabotage us and they get the best of us. And kind of when we let them in and we lean into them, which happens a lot of times, when we really have terrible self-esteem or terrible self-identity and terrible self-confidence. So if those are some areas that you need to work on, you may want to address those, which will also help kind of move you through this stuff. When intuition comes in, it is clear, baby. It is just certain and it is clear. Even if you can't offer them an explanation, when you know, you know. And a lot of times it just solves a problem or leads you closer to a solution that you've been kind of working on or kind of like asking for. It's also super spontaneous. It's just like, what was that? Oh yeah, that does make sense. And a lot of times like when it comes in for me, I'm kind of like, wait, what? Like kind of like a little butterfly net, like trying to catch it. And when it comes in, it's usually like in alignment and in my like value sphere. Like it's in alignment with my core values and who I am and it kind of pushes my deepest desires along and it helps me expand on who I am. And you gotta figure out how it comes in for you. Is it gonna be a whisper? Is it gonna be that gut feeling? Is it gonna be that inner knowing? Don't worry, I got you. I got a whole exercise at the end of this uh, video that's gonna help you figure it out once for all. But for me, it's kind of like a coin going into a payphone. I know I'm aging myself. For the youngins, it's like an airdrop, okay? It's just, it draws to me, it opens me up, it expands me. It kind of feels like a hug from the universe or like a leg up or like an assist and definitely that like snap of the fingers feeling. Sometimes I feel it in my stomach and my heart space kind of like rise up and just like, ah, and it usually keeps me present. It doesn't really make me feel uncomfortable, but if it does, it's kind of like that good uncomfortable, but not where I'm trying to answer why. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? It kind of like comes with me wanting to act on it and knowing that I should, as opposed to coming out of fear or like, don't do this, this isn't a good idea. It's kind of like, I lean a little bit closer, like, oh, what'd you say? And I get an idea out of nowhere. That's very calming. It's also exciting and it piques my interest. It lights me up. There's kind of more of this knowing and yeah, you're making the right decision as you incorporate what the intuitive hit is. And I just feel like it feels very right. And I'm not second guessing myself and I'm not scared. And in the end, it all kind of like comes together. Kind of like making this video. I got the idea, I worked on it, it all came together. And honestly, this is probably the easiest video I've ever filmed. Let's keep going. The moment we've all been waiting for. Will my intrusive thoughts manifest? Absolutely not. No, 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 no. Not unless you tell yourself these terrible things every day, every moment of the day, and have it on repeat and have it in a loop and constantly reinforce them. If you wanna counteract this, you can always use the tool like I talked about before, inviting the thought to the table and addressing it, leaning into the fear and moving through it. Again, you may need some help with that professionally. So a good place to start off is with affirmations. When the thought comes in, you say, only my positive and good thoughts manifest. Life is good, life is amazing, and only good things happen to me. Life is always working in my favor. Or you can say, no, 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 this is not happening right now. And you can cut the thought in the moment and you can just stop it right there. I find that this method works a lot better for people who don't have a lot of anxiety or people who don't have a lot of past traumas or who have worked through those things. Also, any individual who basically has never had space held for them or their lived experiences, you might not want to use this method right away unless you've kind of worked through stuff or you've kind of, you know, navigated those life experiences and kind of worked on it. it might not be a good idea to discount or dismiss your feelings and emotions in the moment without having had counseling or therapy in addressing those things first. For the rest of us, as soon as these thoughts come in, start using the affirmations and flood your mind with the positive and the good affirmations which will counter the really bad thought. I also love using gratitude. It's a great way to encounter stuff that's going on and it's a great way to just basically combat an intrusive thought. Remind yourself all the great things that are happening to you that have happened to you and all the things 
you're grateful for and just how wonderful your life is. And just name three things in the moment. It will help, trust me. Because overthinking lingers and hangs around, especially if you're trying something new, especially if you're like embarking on something that's out of your routine. The intrusive thoughts are gonna kick in because they're trying to protect you. So just remind your mind, we're trying something new. Thanks for reminding me to be cautious, but I'm also trying to have a little bit of fun here. And I'm grateful for all the times that I've tried something new and it was a success. Just remember, intuition can sense something is wrong, but anxiety might throw in there that you're the reason that it's wrong. And we don't want that. How do we work on this? Breath work, therapy, tapping, watching the video that I did on how to develop your intuition, taking care of yourself, meditating, listening to your emotions, or keeping track of your intuitive hits or when your body is telling you what's up. Keep it in a little diary in the notes app on your phone or get one of the Donna's journals if you want. But you gotta pay attention to those gut feelings. Is it uneasiness? Is it excitement? How does it feel in certain situations? Is it guiding you to pay attention to something? And if so, what? Listen to that inner voice. Is it quiet? Is it subtle? Does it offer guidance? Does it give you some insight? Pay attention to synchronicities. Intuition can also manifest through synchronicities and basically meaningful occurrences or coincidences or things that happen. Little serendipitous events that seem to align with your thoughts, your feelings, and your intentions. So definitely pay attention to those. And always listen to the physical sensations in your body. Intuition totally communicates through physical sensations and bodily cues such as tingling, chills, that feeling of warmth or that little bit, let's pay attention right now, or that expansive feeling that I was talking about before. Also, if you're into dreams and visions, intuitive insights can come into us in our dreams or visions or symbolic things, messages, and that can offer guidance or clarity, especially when it comes to a particular concern. For my creative friends, Creative inspiration is one of the best. Intuition always plays in that inspiration, in guiding artists and writers and singers and songwriters and comedians, and even in innovators and product creators to new ideas, insights, solutions, and creative intuition usually comes up spontaneously, often when we're relaxed, total state of mind where we're willing to receive. Finally, as a nurse, I wanna remind you that your bodies have intuition. It holds so much knowledge and valuable insight into you, into decision-making and into self-care. So definitely make it a point to tune into your body. Look at things like, are you tense? Are you relaxed? Where's the discomfort? And look for those clues about what feels right and what feels good for you. For the empaths, I got you. A lot of time intuition can also manifest through empathy and emotional resonance and the ability to sense what others are feeling and experiencing on a very deep level. And you, my friends, have to take the most care of yourselves. So let's do the test and let's do this exercise to help you figure out where your intuition comes up for you. I want you to sit in a quiet space and I want you to relax and I want you to close your eyes and I want you to take a nice deep breath in and an exhale and one more. And now I'm gonna ask you a question. Does a dog bark? The answer is yes. What did that feel like? Where did it come up in your body? You can ask yourself it again if you want. Let's try this again, shall we? Does a dog bark? See where that came up, see where you felt that. Does a dog moo? The answer to that is no, obviously. So where did you feel that? Where did that come up? And where did you kind of see that in your body or feel that in your mind? Now, what I want you to do is start doing these questions with a partner or a friend and kind of have them ask you questions that you know the yes or no's to. And this way you can kind of hone in and feel where these things are coming. And then start asking yourself yes or no questions in real life. So basically you're gonna ask yourself, do I want Chinese food or do I want Italian when it comes to ordering lunch? And see where the yes or no is. And then when you got the food, see how sad satisfied you are and if that was the right decision and then kind of keep moving forward with other things and you can kind of test it on a larger scale. I'm not going to lie to you because all of this stuff and working on this has been work for me and I've had to learn how to just cultivate my own trust and my own intuition and develop a sense of self-trust in all of this and it's a practice. You have to practice decision making and intuition and you got to create space for yourself and you have to reflect and you have to create space for self-reflection and integrate mindfulness and meditation. But ultimately, I've had to learn how to trust the process. I've had to learn how to understand that developing mindfulness and intuition is a journey and it requires patience and practice. And I've shared a lot of that journey and a lot of the content that I've made, which you can find on this channel. I mean, I've had to learn how to trust the process. I've had to learn that with growth comes a lot of deepening of my connection to myself and to the world around me. And all of this has really taught me how to take care of myself so much better because I've learned how to understand intrusive thoughts and I've learned how to recognize them. And yeah, that's the first step. It's the first thing we went over in this video. But recognizing and trusting your intuition 
It's one of the most powerful things that you can do for yourself. It's one of the most powerful tools that you can have to navigate life's uncertainties, to make decisions, and to kind of do things that are aligned with your authentic self and figure out your authentic self. But you gotta learn how to sit with yourself and sit with your body and learn what anxiety feels like. And you gotta learn to know when intuition hits. And it takes practice, but I promise you it's all worth it because it all just comes together. The right people start showing up, the right things start happening, and the level of self-confidence and the level of just, just happiness within myself and just self-assurance that I have since I've worked on all this stuff, it's just reached a new level. I'm so much more calmer and I'm so much more at peace with me and I just know what I'm doing is right for me. And I want you to have that for yourself and I want you to have that feeling for yourself. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and I thank you for spending this much time with me. Please comment below because you know I'm always looking for ways and things and you know I love this stuff. So hit me with the comments while you're at it hit the subscribe button and like this video share it if you can and yeah check out the donna shop i don't know stay safe stay healthy and um take care of yourselves and i'll see you on the other side guys bye <music>